Hey friends, here we go, 2.2. Do you understand statements and truth values? Again, you're gonna feel like we're back in logic 102, right? All right, a statement is a sentence that is either true or false, okay? So we can look at these statements, true or false, or cannot be determined. The Bible is the word of God, true, okay? Um, two times three is nine false x plus 5 is equal to 23 all right well if we look at this one um it's not a statement because we can't determine it to be true or false we can solve this and then say x plus 5 equals 23 if x is equal to 18, right? We could say that. But at this point, number three is not a statement. So four, life began through the act of creation by God. True. And number five, eight plus seven equals 15. Once again, true. All right. So we've got, you know, true, true, false is not a statement. True, true. A negation. A negation is any statement can be negated, right? A negation just has the opposite truth value. For example, if my statement is P, my conditional, maybe we represent it with the letter P. If we negate P, we put that little tilde in front and we read it not P. There are quantifiers that we also use, such as all, every, some, or there exists. A universal quantifier means all and every. Universally, this applies, okay? Existential quantifiers, one or more, okay? so or there exists. So an example of a universal quantifier would be all mammals breathe oxygen, right? That's the definition of a mammal, right? We breathe oxygen. An existential quantifier, one or more, or there exists. There exists some mammals with four legs, okay? Some mammals have four legs, and that's a truth, okay? All right, a truth table, once again, feeling like logic, a truth table provides a summary of all possible truth values for the given statement. For example, if our conditional is P, P can either be true or false. If P is true, then the negation is false. If P is false, then the negation is true. I like this little um, display right here, this little diagram. So for the set A, if we're calling our statement P, this set A, the negation is everything within the universal set that is not in set A. Okay, so let's look at example one. Let's negate each statement. The first one, there exists a student who gets straight A's. The negation would be no student gets straight A's because the statement says there is one. If we say no student gets them, then we've negated it. For the conditional Q, some pies are not cherry pies. To negate it, we could say all pies are cherry pies. That negates that. And for this conditional R, no square is a circle. To negate that, we would say, uh huh, there's a square that's a circle. All right. Now, some of these are logically true and not true. Okay. But for this, we're kind of suspending, you know, because we know definitively that no square is a circle. Right. But we're just going to put the negation is an untrue statement. 
there is no square that is a circle. So that just negates it. All right, moving on. All right, so when we can talk about a conjunction, a conjunction is a compound statement formed by connecting two statements with the word and. Oh, that should be a D there. D and. <laughs> Now, in logic, when you took logic last year, you would write this, P dot Q. I want you to understand that in here, we write it with kind of that caret symbol. Okay, both are correct. Both are accepted in the logic community as correct. It's just your book, your logic book, used the dot, whereas we're going to use that caret symbol in here. Understand they're interchangeable. All right, so a conjunction uses and. So here we go, here's a conjunction. Christmas is in December and February has 31 days. That's a conjunction. If this conjunction is to be true as a whole, then both parts must be true. So let's set up a truth table. So we've got Christmas is in December. We, it could be true, true, false, false. Now Christmas is in December, so we know it has to be true. Now, February has 31 days. Again, that could either be true or false when the P is true, or it could be true or false when the P is false. Okay. Notice that since the first statement is true and the second statement is false, our only option, you know, if we were going to validate it in this one, is this second one, right? Which makes our conjunction overall false. For an AND statement to be true, the only way an AND statement is true is if both the P and the Q are true. Now in a disjunction, which is the second one, in a disjunction, a compound statement is using the word or, and that looks like that V that goes in between them. If we look at this truth table, once again, we've got the, the truth values, P can be true, true, false, and false, and Q could be true, false, true, false. Now, since we're using the word or, we're going to use the same conjectures or conditionals as of earlier. So we're going to say Christmas is in December or February has 31 days. For this statement to be true, only one of the two conditionals must be true. If they are both false, then our statement as a whole is false. But as long as one of them is true, then that statement is true. So example number two, true or false, any three points are collinear or the union of opposite rays form a right angle. So first of all, let's think about this. Any three points are collinear. Is that true? Or is that false? Hmm. That's false, right? What if we had a point here, here, and here? Are these collinear points? No. If it was coplanar, I'd say, yeah, true. Now let's look at the second half of the statement. The union of opposite rays forms a right angle. Hmm, that's false. Because opposite rays mean they're directly opposite, meaning they form a straight line. So that's false. Okay. Since both of these are false, the total conjecture is false. Okay. Since both, both of them are false, the disjunction is false. Okay. Example number three, we're going to do this in class. I've got some stuff for us when we go through um, in class this great truth table. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this be for right now. And we'll tackle it when we get to class today, tomorrow. Hopefully you're filling out your TRF. Here's your homework 1 through 31 odd, which we will work on in class tomorrow.